A very brief introduction to log linear analysis for multi-way contingency tables. That's a mouthful. The topic is log linear analysis and before deciding to make this video I did think of jumping straight in and showing you an example but then there are just so many issues involved here I thought mm, let's kind of just do a really really general introduction. Um, so here it is. So these are questions I'm going to kind of answer as best as I can. So first one, what is log linear analysis used for? Okay, um, recall that, that in cross tabs uh, we study about whether there's an association between two categorical variables. You know, is there an association between A and B or is there a relationship between A and B or are A and B independent? Where those A and B's are factors, qualitative variables categorical variables. Uh, for example, um, is there a relationship between um, uh, between smoking and lung cancer? Log linear analysis is a generalization of of uh, of cross tabs because in cross tabs you the question is is there association between A and B? So in other words just between two things, two qualitative factors. In log linear analysis, you extend that because you can study it to way more than two things between t three, four, five, six, any number of things. Of course, if some of you have done cross tab to a more advanced level, you've in a master's course you've probably even seen it for um, a three variable case. That's when you do a cross tabs of uh, two factors controlling for a third one. Well, log linear analysis takes care of that, but it can go higher and higher and higher. All right. So that brings us on to multi-way contingency table. What is what is meant by multi-way contingency table? Uh, let me just show you an example here. Um, here I've got data, categorical data on um, uh, whether a person uses alcohol, whether they smoke cigarettes, whether they use um, marijuana, and this is aggregated data. So for people who do not use alcohol, do not kind of drink alcohol, uh, smoke, cigarette and smoke, marijuana, three people. Okay, so this is aggregated data. Now if I were to kind of just get a table for the
we've got factors here, alcohol, cigarettes, and let's put in marijuana as well. So now this is like, you know, this is like three variables. Then what I want to do is I go to model. Okay, I'm going to go to custom and I can build terms. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in all the main effects and then let me just add an interaction of alcohol and cigarettes. In other words, and this is how I do it. Look, that's the usual, it's got a times button there, so alcohol times cigarettes, that's an interaction term. Um, let me get the output. And then I go to options, uh, undelete all these things, I don't want to clutter up the output. I just want estimates. Uh, the whole point I'm doing this is I'm trying um, to answer a question. Um, how can I tell uh, the interaction term is significant and where can I find the interaction term in the output? Okay, parameter estimates is just like regression. So we've got a constant, that's like the intercept term here. And let's run down. Here are the multiplication signs. These are the interactions. Okay. And forget about those zeros, what we can see is that out of all these interactions only one has a number so we look at that, that's the estimate and we run along there and look at its significance it is significant, Okay, just like the usual you know this is like just the usual kind of t-test only it's not the t-test it's called the z-test t-test but it does the same thing testing the significance of the interaction the null hypothesis is there is no interaction that will be the same for all these kind of models all these parameters of the interaction terms. The null hypothesis the interaction term is not significant, we reject. So we say that there is ev strong, in this case, strong evidence of presence of interaction. Okay, so that's how I find it. An interaction means that there's an association. So here you go, next point. Significant interaction terms means that there is an association. So just by looking, we don't even have to delve into knowing what it means at the moment. All we can say is that there is a relationship between cigarette uh, smoking and alcohol uh, drinking. And the nature of the relationship can be, will, can be described in terms of uh, odds ratios, just as for cross tabs. Okay, um, so that's the interaction term. Uh, the main effects, right, the main effects are not much use to us, they're, they're not interesting. So let's go back to my output again. Right, I said that the components of a log linear model are the main effects and the interactions. Suppose I put them all in. So here, this block consists of interactions because they've got the stars by each of these terms here. All these other guys upstairs, these are main effects. Okay, and they are not useful um, because the interaction terms tell about whether there's association, yes or no, and we'll be able to kind of interpret in terms of the odds by looking at the parameters uh, and that's all we need we don't need the stuff up there all right next log linear analysis versus cross tabs okay I said earlier on I was going to demonstrate to you that you get the same results say we'll have two variables using cross tabs as we're going to get using log linear analysis so let's let's do that so you can see you know make it concrete in your mind that the two things are pretty much uh, uh, doing the same thing. Let's test the null hypothesis using cross tabs uh, where there's an association between alcohol use and cigarette smoking. So null hypothesis will be no association between cigarette smoking and alcohol. Analyze, descriptive stats, cross tabs. Okay, I've done that already. Uh, statistics, so this is a revision for you, this really. Chi square. Uh, take that marijuana, controlling for marijuana, so it's just a straightforward um, analysis. Alright, I just want to look at the chi-square test. Here we have the Pearson's chi-square, value 451.4 and the p-value is really tiny. Remember p-value, p stands for probability, so it's between 0 and 1. Low p-value means we reject the null here it's it's pretty much it's low all right less than 0.05 even less than 
What does that mean? It means that there is very strong evidence of a relationship between cigarette smoking and alcohol use. In other words, there's some kind of pattern in this table. Uh, we don't need to go into that. What I want to show you now is that I can get the same result by running this like a log linear analysis. Uh, now before I do that, uh, you might be asking, well, if you can do it using if cross tabs and log linear analysis are doing the same thing, why don't you just use cross tabs all the time? Well, remember, uh, log linear analysis can handle cases of many, 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 many variables much more easily than cross tabs. Because with cross tabs, the tables just get massively big and complicated, and you'll be very hard to kind of interpret what's going on. Okay, so log linear analysis, I run it. Now I just do the same thing thing as that cross tabs. Uh, what I do this time is I take away that interaction term. You don't have to understand exactly why I'm doing this. As in how I just set up that model. We just want to look at the coefficients here. Okay. Goodness of fit tests. We're testing the same null hypothesis, no relationship between cigarette smoking and alcohol use. Pearson chi-square 451.4. Now was that what we had with the cross tabs? Let's have a look. 451.4. Indeed it is. P-value less than 0 0.01. Same. So it's exactly identical. What the log linear table gives you that cross tabs doesn't is this parameter estimates box. And those of you who have to report odds and odds ratios and cross tabs and are lazy to do so, you can actually kind of get them more easily by running a log as if it was log linear analysis on it and interpreting these coefficients, which can be converted into odds ratios. Okay, so now we know what a log linear analysis is. It's it's an extension of cross tabs. Uh, we can use it for it only makes sense to use two or more variables, but usually when we have two variables, we'll just run cross tabs on it. And if you have many, 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 that's when you use log linear analysis. Buttons in SPSS for log linear analysis. Okay, let's have a quick overview of what is available in SPSS for log linear analysis. We go analyze log linear. All right, the three menus. Well. First, I've chosen the first one. The general is like when you want to set up a model and you want to control what's in your model. You want to control what the main effects are and what the interaction effects are through all this stuff. Okay. The second option, well, no, on. the second option, I'm going to go straight to model selection, is because if you have a model with loads and loads of variables, I've got a maximum of three variables, but both I had many, many, many variables. Uh, what you can do is just like in regression where you have this automated um, stepwise procedures like backwards elimination and forward selection procedures that kind of statistically select the best model you can do the same thing with this model selection procedure so you can see here model building you can use backward elimination enter single step so how you could use this is to, uh, if you had a big, big, uh, lots of variables, is to run this thing first, just to kind of get an idea, uh, a starting point as to what the model should be, and then go to general and run that model so you can get more output for it and maybe tinker with it if you need to. Okay. Final option: log it. Okay, well, this kind of falls into my final issue, notable issues. In log linear analysis, uh, I left this to the end because um, usually I think when you learn about cross tabs, you won't even be told about this until the end of the course, if at all. In log linear anal analysis, um, we've assumed so far that our variables are nominal as opposed to ordinal. Okay, remember nominal means that there's no uh, kind of natural ranking. You can't say like for example for alcohol that yes they smoke alcohol is better than no they don't smoke alcohol and same with cigarettes and marijuana. 
So that's nominal, as opposed to ordinal. Ordinal is like uh, a simple example, like is a uh, customer satisfaction. Um, how satisfied? Well, how satisfied are you with this video I've made? <laughs> Very satisfied, not satisfied at all. Uh, hang on. Very satisfied, uh, satisfied, uh, neither satisfied, not satisfied, or satisfied, and so on. That's got natural ranking. That that's ordinal. So uh, when we have ordinal variables, the thing is that you can run log linear, but there'll be we can improve upon the results by taking account that we have ranking. Just like in cross tabs, you can take account the fact that you have. Uh, ranking. So that's a very brief introduction. I don't know how brief that was but <laughs> uh, you, you can get an idea that the length of this video is that there's, a, there's quite a number of issues here. <laughs>